an electric milk frother, not just any electric milk frother, but Thomas Nagy's electrical milk frother. Thomas Nagy is a London-based electrician with a YouTube channel. I shall put a link down below. The idea of this is that you put it onto this connector base and you put your milk in and it's got that little stirrer blade and it's got a heater and it will do various things. I think it's just either mixing it or heating it. Yeah, it's got the option of mixing or heating. However, this one doesn't do either. I've checked the fuse. The fuse is fine when this is placed on here and the button is pressed. Nothing happens. It's dead. Let's open up and see what's inside. The first suspect here is usually liquid ingress, particularly when you see the inside of this and it looks a bit skangy. Let's get a suitable screwdriver and start popping the screws out and see what's inside. Water ingress and electronics, it's just one of those things, particularly when I think there may be a little seal for the actual stirrer inside. Is this going to come off? Is this going to come off? Maybe not. It's it, The screws are spinning. I wonder if they're into something else here. It might be that it actually holds the pot at the other end in as well. I don't think so, though. I think we may have to spudge this a little bit. It might be it might be gummed up with a creamy goo from the milk. Let's see if we can get this into here. Uh-oh. Yeah, this thing is, well, well sealed shut. The screws do seem to be out. I may have to pause momentarily while I try and get this off. It does seem really well stuck in. Now, I'll tell you what, one moment, please. And continuing on, that is a very tight fit. It wicks moisture in. It's a bit rusty inside, and there's very much signs of the green crusties on the circuit board in here. So what's next? How do I get this out further? Do I have to take the motor out? The circuit board looks as though it may actually be clamped onto the motor assembly. So let's see if we can get the motor out. So I shall just basically remove every screw I can find here. If I can get access to them all. This is not accessible. It's uh, possibly, I wonder how it's assembled, what sort of order. I could unplug things. I could do things like unplug the transformer. That would make a little bit more room. Where is the next screw? There's another screw under here. I'm just fumbling around the dark here. Hold on, one moment. Ooh, that's a very rusty screw. Is this going to liberate it? That is very rusty. Excuse me, I got a torch in my mouth. Is that going to liberate it? Yes. It kind of feels looser. Oh, I just squashed that little component. Okay, what do we have? Corrosion everywhere. The curse of all these electronic devices. We've got a little chip there. What's the bet that's a microcontroller? Um, we have what appears to be a relay, most likely, which is for switching the heat element. The motor is being switched from this contact here, which is most likely going to this transistor here which is also a bit corroded. The transformer is going through this little bit of direct fire and then presumably this capacitor. Then there'll be a voltage regulator, possibly this little component here. I'll tell you what, let's have a closer look at this circuit board. That's probably a good idea. One moment, please. The reverse engineering is complete. Lots of water damage. Two things that had failed as a result of that. So here is uh, the top of the circuit board, but note that I've flipped it over so that everything correlates to the circuit board underneath. If you want to have a go at reverse engineering it yourself, there are three connectors. There's the 
uh, low voltage supply on, goes through a bridge rectifier, goes to the smoothing capacitor, voltage regulator, and then a little electrolytic for that lower voltage, the 5 volt supply. It's also got a bigger transistor for the motor, it's got a connector for the motor, and it's got a connector for the temperature sensor. The two contacts up here in the relay are live in, which also loops out to the transformer and live out to the heating element. I shall show you the other side, which is much more interesting, but unfortunately, because it's a bit sort of grimy with corrosion, it's not a terribly clear image for uh, reverse engineering. So there's a live in and live out to the heater, which has nicely separated a large anti-tracking slot and a massive separation from the low voltage circuitry, presumably just to allow for the fact it is a, a damp unit. It's a kitchen appliance and water does get involved at some point. So the low voltage supply from the transformer comes in here. It goes through a bridge rectifier here, goes across to the voltage regulator, which is under here, and then feeds the microcontroller with five volts. It uh, has a little surface mount transistor here with a back EMF diode, a 4148, just a standard signal diode for driving the relay coil. And also for driving the uh, motor, it's got a larger transistor, the same family of transistor, but a larger one. And it's got the back EMF, a bigger back EMF diode, plus extra filtering in the form of a couple of capacitors. The sensor is very simple. It's just a voltage divider based on a 56K resistor and the sensor, which is a 100K sensor. I'll show you that afterwards. There's a microcontroller with two huge streams of very tiny numbers on it. I, they're also kind of covered over. It's very hard to make it out what it is, but it's not really something. I think it's proprietary numbers for the uh, mass produced product. And that controls two LEDs via these resistors. It takes an input from one switch. It monitors the voltage across that uh, thermistor and then it can control uh, this relay, uh, relay here by this transistor and then it can also switch the motor on with this transistor. Let's bring in the schematic. Here is the schematic. Let's zoom down a bit to make it bigger. So there's the main screen. Say that's live, that's neutral. Uh, and here we've got an earth connection as well. It's one of those sit on bases that makes electrical connection when you sit the thing on it. Very popular here. There's a relay contact switching the heater. I shall just call it heat for heating the milk. And then it also feeds the primary transformer, which is 240 volt in, 9 volt out. The 9 volt out goes straight into a bridge rectifier and then has a 10k discharge resistor, a Standard little filter capacitor, probably 100 nanofarad, and then a 470 microfarad, 25 volt capacitor. It then feeds a voltage regulator. It's worth noting that that unregulated, roughly 9 volts ish goes out. It'll probably it'll be 9 volts plus what times 1.41. It'll be charged. It will charge that capacitor up to the peak. Also, the voltage will fly up a little bit with no load. There is no regulation. It doesn't really matter. It's for the motor and it's for the relay. They're not too bothered about that. So there's a 10 ohm resistor feeding down to a 5 volt regulator. And then it's got another 2K discharge resistor, a small decoupling capacitor, and then a 22 microfarad, 25 volt uh, capacitor. So it's got 9 volt, 5 volt, and 0 volt out. These discharge resistors are because it's got a microcontroller. If you don't have those, the voltage can fall so slowly without with the low load of the microcontroller that it can result in the false resetting or you know unstable resetting if the power gets reinstated again before the voltage is dropped to the point the processor reset completely. It's just something that's easy to add in and it works very well in providing and making sure that when you turn it off, the voltage in these capacitors will drop quickly and provide a nice clean reset. The three supply rails, 9 volts, 5 volts and 0 volts, go across to the microcontroller board section. The 5 volt feeds the microcontroller directly. The button has a 10k pull-up resistor so that it pulls that input via that 2k resistor up to 5 volts, but when you push the button it pulls it down to 0 volts. That button had bad contacts, but it's not the only thing that had bad contacts. When I bridged out the button uh, while powering the circuit just from a bench power supply, it started flashing a red LED. It was actually detecting that the NTC thermistor also had a broken connection. It was corroded. 
The NDC thermistor forms a potential divider. It's called a 100K NDC thermistor because typically around about room temperature, it will be about 100,000 ohms. Let's test that. Let's put this down to 200K and bring that little sensor in. Notice the, that it's all been paired back because I had to re-solder it, which was hard. I had to apply lots of aggressive flux to get it to mate onto those connections because they were corroded and it soaked up inside the cable. Uh, 116K, good enough. That's roughly room temperature. I'm not sure what it is in here. Uh, that means it's a bit colder than 20. If it had gone, as the temperature rises, the resistance will get lower. That's the way these type of NDC thermistors work. So this thermistor forms that potential divider, 56K. There's a thermistor and the voltage has been monitored via this 2K resistor and a little capacitor just to provide a bit of decoupling for noise, maybe external interference. So it gets a nice steady voltage there that will vary according to the temperature of the milk, which is monitored by this thing being pushed against the bottom of the milk receptacle. There are two LEDs, each with a 470 ohm resistor. And then there are two transistors being switched. The relay has a back EMF uh, protection diode to protect the transistor. It's got a 2K resistor switching the, the transistor, but it's notable that for extra safety, they've got a 10K pull-down resistor so that if this microcontroller doesn't boot up properly, then the input of this doesn't float and potentially turn the transistor on and cause the relay to power in some way and bring the heater on out of control. That would uh, blow the thermal fuses um, at the, on the input supply. The reason they've got one on live and neutral is because it means that if something, if a heating element goes to earth uh, and I live and neutral are swapped, no matter which way around it is, it's going to break, end up breaking both live and neutral. It's, it doesn't matter what polarity it is. It's going to kill the power if you get an earth fault that results in the heater being powered all the time. The other thing that's powered is the motor. The motor has extra circuitry. It's got a simple 470 ohm resistor to the transistor. And then it's got a capacitor across the transistor, which is quite unusual, but also it's got the back EMF spike uh, diode plus a filter capacitor across the motor. The reason for all that is because microcontrollers are very susceptible to spikes and glitches and motors produce lots of spikes and glitches. Okay, now I'm going to bring the circuit board in. I've got some wires on it. I'm going to set this up. I'm going to add this back on. I'm going to add this back on. And we'll emulate it operating, but I'll have to pause momentarily. I'll have to get the solder iron up to temperature because I intend to heat the sensor so it goes into the other mode and, well, we can at least hear the relay operate. I'll be back in one moment. So that's the solder iron up to temperature. I'll show you the assembly of this unit. To assemble it, you put this circuit board onto this mount here. It actually goes in the back of it. And this area here actually goes over the switch area. And it basically, it has a little lip here that hoops, hooks over the circuit board. And then you put the screws in through the back self-tapping screws, noting that this one also has a little insulator that covers the live terminals in there and just prevents stuff splashing on them or people poking them or things like that. You shouldn't really be in there with the power's on. Not recommended, particularly when you're holding a earth metal object. The LEDs have a little light guide that clips on to basically shield the light from each other so you get a nice crisp dot on the front of the unit. The temperature sensor has a spring and it goes in here and the spring at the back pushes it against the base. The heat compound was completely dry in this. I think it's seen a bit of use. So you, uh, it would be worth adding a little drop more of that. Uh, this one is normally heat shrinked, sleeved, and then this spring comes down and it just means that when this is put into place and it's screwed onto the unit, that little stud, that heat sensing stud is pressed against the housing. The motor then goes through this with the heat sensor here. And when you screw it in, that secures the circuit board in. It's quite footry, so there's not a lot of room. But it also pushes this silicon seal against the base of the unit and also that temperature sensor. Everything gets pressed into place. I'm um, kind of feeling that maybe liquid has gone through here. I'm not really sure. Liquid has got in somehow. Oh, that seal is free to rotate. It's interesting. The circuit board once in, let me just plug this together. 
the motor goes into here, the temperature sensor goes into here, and let's power it up. I've got some leads connected with different length wires just to uh, make sure they don't short out against each other. Let's power it up. It is powered. When you press the button initially, the motor starts and both the LEDs light. It's now effectively... Oh, oh the wires just come off that. Uh, the wires come off that again because it's actually snapped. That's annoying. Tell you what, I'm just going to fake that then. One moment, please. Right here, I'm going to fake that sensor with the uh, variable resistor here. So it starts off 100k, you press the button. Oh, you know what's worth actually uh, doing here? Hope I just shorted something. Uh, what's actually worth doing here is showing you what happens when it detects that the temperature sensor is open circuit and it's powered up and you press the button it does a wee brief self-test, it powers the relay off again, it doesn't happen when you press the button, it flashes the red LED to show that something is amiss. So the red LED means uh, it's detected a fault. That's good that it can do that. Let's turn the power off because it won't work until the power has been turned off and on again. Let's put this connection here and we'll set the resistor to 100k. So I shall power that back on again. I think this wire touched the, one of the incoming supply wires. That's not good. Hopefully it wouldn't have wrecked the thing. Push the button. It's running this. The relay has come in to actually heat the milk. It's got both LEDs on. If I then turn this down in increments, at some point you'll hear the relay click. 56k, 47k, 33k, 22k. The relay just clicked out. If I turn it back up again to 100k, does the relay come back in? No, it doesn't. It's going to do one thermal cycle. It's not going to cycle on and off. It just heated it up and that's it. It's not going to do it until it's reset again. Presumably if I turned it off and then on again. Is it going to do it now? Hold on. Yes, it did. Turning it off and on again will restart the cycle. I'm not sure. I guess the motor runs for a certain length of time and then it just cuts off. I guess it wouldn't just run forever. Uh, there will be some sort of timer. But uh, that's, that appears to be the issues with it. It was firstly the button. Now, incidentally, the button is soldered on the track side of the circuit board. I'll just turn the power supply off to this. To get that off, I actually cut the leads off the button and then desoldered the pins individually and put a new button on. If you're getting spare buttons, it's the one with the button that sticks up about one millimeter. Uh, you can get packs of these buttons that, you know, quite cheaply on eBay. They're so common that you get a, a selection pack. The 100k resist the thermistor, that's annoying. It's got very thin wires and the corrosion has actually crept down the inside there, causing discoloration. You might have to put new wires on it completely. Make sure they're not close to each other so they can't short against each other uh, once they're sleeved. Uh, but you might have to trim it way back down to get decent metal to actually solder back onto. But there we go. That is Thomas Nagy's milk frother. The problem was... The usual problem, water ingress. It would have been nice if they put a conformal coating in the circuit board, but they're not really interested in that because, well, it will work for a certain length of time, then you can buy a new one is probably their, their policy here. But there we go. Interesting and logical circuit board. Just a, a standard little 8-pin microcontroller with the same pin out as typical picks and other things. A little relay for switching the heater, which isn't going to be hugely powerful. It's quite a small unit, probably just 100 or so watts. I'm not sure what the power rating of it is. Uh, what's the... Here's the base for it. What does it say? 500 watts. Okay, that's quite a high power, but, you know, it's only about 2 amps. So that really is just a cheap little relay that is suited to that. And that's it. Just a couple of transistors to switch a little low-voltage motor to keep things, well, because low voltage is just safer for the... For the liquid-filled machines, the only thing that are running at full mains voltage is uh, the heater and the transformer that provides power to the, the, trans, uh, to the motor and the little relay. But there we go. 
that was interesting. So uh, if you have one of these, they are fixable. But if there's already liquid damage, this thing was covered in corrosion, it was under components. Usually by that time, it's just better buying another.